Namaste, Angel. This is going to be our full moon in Leo reading. Our, our full blood moon. Um, also, that some are calling a super moon, but the Farmer's Almanac says is not a super moon. Um, blue moon, full lunar eclipse. Is that it? I think I got everything. <laughs> That's This reading is for all of that. And I hope that you guys get to see the red candle. Um, which is burning a lot faster than the blue candle, although I lit them at the same time. So I, I think that since the red candle did signify Mars for me, um, the masculine planet of love, and the blue uh, candle was representing Venus, I think that this is like the burning passions that we've seen show up in all the wands cards that we've been getting. That's why it's burning faster. I hope you guys get to see the heart-shaped flame um, that I have seen a couple times tonight as I was setting up. Um, all right, so I'm going to begin with www.space.com just so we can get an understanding of exactly what all the hype is about, about this moon. I'm starting from the paragraph that begins, the second full moon has also been dubbed a quote unquote super moon, a full moon that roughly coincides with perigee, the point in the moon's orbit when it is closest to the earth. In January, the moon reaches perigee on the night of January 30th and reaches peak fullness on the night of January 31st. The moon's distance from Earth can vary a bit because the orbit isn't perfectly circular. So even though the average distance is 238,855 miles, on January 30th, it will only be 221,559 miles away from Earth. On average, the apparent size of the moon in the sky is about 0.5 degrees across or about 31 arc minutes. During this supermoon, though, our lunar neighbor will be 33.51 arc minutes across or 0.56 or 11 degrees. As a result, it will e appear 11% larger than an average full moon. For most skywalkers, that difference is difficult to see. The moon's second full, this, this month's second full moon on January 31st will feature a total lunar eclipse or a blood moon, a quote unquote blood moon. If you live in the Western US, Hawaii, or the eastern half of Asia, you'll see the moon turn blood red as it enters the deepest parts of the Earth's shadow during the eclipse. A total lunar eclipse is one where the moon passes through the central region of the shadow of the Earth, which describes a cone that stretches away from the sun. At other times, the moon only passes through the shadow partway, and that's a partial lunar eclipse. During a total lunar eclipse, the surface of the moon appears to turn red because red light that passes through the Earth's atmosphere is bent. The atmosphere is acting like a lens. In addition, red light is scattered less than blue. So here they're talking about a lot of the, the red and blue also. And those of you who saw the uh, love reading know that that has been a theme and that I that theme occurred after I already had my red and blue candles. Like I was I was feeling it prior. Um, anyway, so the, the red light makes it through and shines on the lunar surface, even though the moon is in shadow. This is the same mechanism that makes sunsets look red. At sunset, the sun's light has to pass through more of the Earth's air and the shorter wavelength blue parts of the spectrum are scattered away. Some places on Earth will feature a spectacular view of the blood moon rising, or setting on the day of the eclipse. Observers on the east coast of the U.S. on January 31st won't get that. The moon will only just be entering the darker part of the Earth's shadow when it sets at 7.04 a.m. in New York City, another 11. Fullness occurs at 8.26 a.m., 8.8. And that's also local time in New York. But the moon will be out of view then. On the other hand, if you're in Chicago, the eclipse will reach its maximum at 6.56 a.m. local time, and the moon will be setting at 7.03 a.m. 
As one moves west, the eclipse happens earlier in the evening. And by the time one reaches Hawaii, the entire eclipse is visible well before the moon sets at 719. Both numbers that represent God, 7 and 19. That's, that's a.m., by the way, local time in Honolulu. If you live in Moscow or locations roughly on the northwest to southeastern line, from there, the moon will be emerging from the Earth's shadow as it rises. This line marks the quote-unquote terminator of the Earth, the line between the day side and the night side. It's not straight north-south because the Earth is tilted on its axis. In Moscow... Moonrise is at 5.01 p.m. local time, and the moon will still look red for another six minutes. Moving southeast to Karachi, the view is better at 6.13 p.m., another 19. That's local time also. The moon rises and reaches the maximum eclipse at 6.29 p.m., making for some spectacular photo ops. So maybe we'll get pictures from Russia if we're lucky. Um, now, going quickly to um, the Almanac, www.almanac.com, they tell a slightly different story. A supermoon, blue moon, and lunar, lunar eclipse all on January 31st. Heard about this super blue moon eclipse, in quotes, on January 31st? A blue moon, a supermoon, and a blood moon eclipse. A convergence of all three events that last happened 150 years ago. Get viewing information on how, where, and when uh, to see this total lunar eclipse on this website, if you like. In quotes, super blue blood moon eclipse is the description many websites are giving for the full moon that's coming up. So what does this mean? A moon that's super big, one that's blue, one that's blood red, maybe a combination of blue and red, a purple super moon? Number one, it's quote unquote super because it's a close full moon and theoretically larger than average. Number two, it's blue because a blue moon is the name for a second full moon in the same calendar month. Remember we had the first one on the first or second depending upon where one is located. And third, it's a blood moon, quote unquote blood moon, because it will be the night of a total lunar eclipse, which normally turns the full moon coppery red. Put them all together and that's what you've got. Actual astronomers smile and shake their heads at these catchy names. They really want more people to watch the sky and having names for things helps with publicity. Call it what you wish. Each celestial event is interesting in itself. Sometimes celestial rhythms just sync up to make us wonder. Supermoon. January 31st is the grand finale of a trilogy of supermoons that have been taking place since early December. Supermoon is the new term, which no one used it until a few years ago. Instead, the moon's closest approach to Earth, full or otherwise, was called a perigean moon. The problem is that even the very closest moon does not look any larger than your average normal full moon. The size difference is too small for the naked eye to detect. But okay, call it super. The super moon term has been used merely for the closest moon of the year, but also has not been used merely for the closest moon of the year, but also for the second closest and third closest and so on. This one coming up on January 31st, for example, the third of a trilogy and the second closest of 2018. It is 358,816 kilometers away as compared with January 1st full moon, which was 356,565 kilometers away. People post telephoto pictures on social media depicting enormous looking moons in the sky. So astronomers like myself are concerned that the public will look up, see nothing unusual and just shrug. Blue moon, quote unquote, blue moon has become a popular term for the second full moon in a month. The name arose because of a depression error mistake in an astronomy magazine. The term was never used by astronomers or the ancient Greeks or Native Americans or anybody else. Despite the name, the moon won't look blue at all. Indeed, the expression, quote, once in a blue moon, end quote, doesn't apply since it's not that rare. The event occurs every two and a half years. That said, the total eclipse of a blue moon hasn't occurred since March 31st, 1866. That's 100. 
52 years ago. Blood moon. Okay, what about a blood moon? Well, a fully eclipsed moon turns coppery orange. Actual blood is not copper colored unless you have a serious <laughs> hematological problem. But let's not be picky. Blood is more dramatic than pennies and there's no reason not to call a totally eclipsed moon a blood moon even if this too is a very recently coined phrase. For all sky watchers in North America, the full moon on January 31st, 2018 will be both super and blue. This January 31st eclipse, however, is a tricky one because the moon will set before it's totally eclipsed in the eastern, entire eastern half of Canada and the United States. So West Coasters, sky watchers in the western states and Canada provinces, Alaska and Hawaii in the islands will have the best view of the coppery total totally eclipsed moon look low in the west before dawn its lowness will greatly deepen its ruddy hue on pacific standard time the lunar eclipse begins at 3 48 a.m pst totality will start around 4 51 a.m and it will last until 6 5 a.m another 11. if you set your alarm you can see the entire lunar eclipse from start to finish further east um, we'll see a partial eclipse of the full moon early morning before the moon sets and morning twilight arrives. If you live in the Eastern time zone, head out outside about 645 Eastern standard time, look West Northwest and find an unobstructed view, ideally at a high point since the moon is near the horizon at this time at 648 AM Eastern standard time, the darker part of the earth's shadow will begin to blanket the moon and create the blood red tint at the moon and the moon will set less than a half hour later. If you live in the central time zone, head out around 6.15 a.m. CST. The moon will appear to be a blood red color and the view will remain until 7 a.m. Central Standard Time when the sun arises. In the Rocky Mountain region, the lunar eclipse will begin around 4.48 a.m. Mountain Standard Time as the darker part of the Earth's inner shadow blankets the moon. Viewers in this area will see the eclipse peak around 6.30 a.m. Mountain Standard Time until 7 o'clock a.m. when the moon will set. Full moon names. With all these newly hatched full moon names, let's have some fun. The year's lowest full moon has no official name. That's the full moon closest to the June 21st summer solstice. Its low height makes it pass through extra air and usually gives it an amber hue. Let's start calling it the honey moon. We already have. <laughs> I don't know what, why they're saying this. Um, and it looks like the rest goes on to talk about June's full moon. I'm not sure why. So with that, I will quickly move on. I'm just trying to keep going and giving us this information right before I sat down or just as I sat down, I started to think about the differences with people in the love reading and specifically like racial um, is what had come to mind. Although that had nothing to do with the, with the moon reading. That's what came into mind. And, um, I was thinking about how difficult it is for some people to be able to overcome some of these things because it's recent. And if you didn't experience it and you haven't experienced it and you will not experience it because it doesn't apply to you, you might not realize how recent it is. But for example, like my mother, my parents um, were born in 1946. So 1965, is when civil rights laws passed. That means my parents were 19, 20, right? 18 to 20 um, around this time when the laws were passing. That means their whole time growing up and teenage years, they had no rights in this country. That's not a long time ago. So for me now, um, you know, to date now, I, I would date whoever I wanted to and I would allow my, my children to do the same. But for me now to, date somebody who wasn't of my race, it's understandable, um, at least in my opinion, why, you know, society may look at it in particular ways and, and maybe even closer than society, people in one's family. And I think that that's what a lot of us are dealing with, um, issues in our immediate family of, you know, why would you consider this person that is different from you for whatever reason? 
um, you know, there's race, there's religion, there's age, there's, um, you know, economic status, social status, all of these things have been coming up. But I thought about that. And then right when I was about to start, I said, you know what, let me see what, what else happened on January 31st. So I went to on this day.com and sure enough, it's about laws being passed. Like, you know, well, I'll just go over them in 1865. So this is 100 years before the ones that I had, that had come to my mind. Congress passes the 13th amendment abolishing slavery in America. It passes 121 to 24. So 24 people just, you know, um, 200 years ago wanted, or less than 200 years ago, wanted black people to remain slaves in this country. Okay. Um, 1865, General Robert E. Lee named, was named commander in chief of the Confederate armies during the civil war. 1943, General Friedrich von Paul surrenders to Soviet troops at Stalingrad. So this was during um, 1943, World War I, right? That's not that long ago. 1950, U.S. President Harry Truman publicly announces support for the development of the hydrogen bomb. 1985, South African President, this is even more reason, I was a te teenager during apartheid, I mean, this, this is crazy when what was going on in South Africa. 1985, South African President P.W. Botha offers to free Nelson Mandela if he denounces violence. Did you know Ham the chimpanzee in the, was the first primate in space? He went up 158 miles and, and this was aboard the Mercury slash Redstone number two on January 31st in the year 1961. Famous birthdays, Franz Schubert, Jersey Joe, Jackie Robinson, and his birthday and, um, well, birth year and year of passing are sticking out at me. He was born in 1919, so that double 19 or 11, um, and he passed in 1972. That's another 19. Also, Ernie Banks has a birthday. He was a baseball player as well. Or Nolan Ryland has a... N Nolan... Ryan has a birthday. Uh, he too is still alive like Ernie Banks and has a birthday and, and was in baseball. And Justin Timberlake also has a birthday on this date. Would you believe the first venereal disease clinic opens in London uh, at London Lock Hospital on January 31st in the year 1747? Famous deaths, Guy Fawkes, A.A. A. Milne, Samuel Goldwyn and Mel Hine. All right, I won't go into detail on those. If you want to read, you know, further about what went on with those events and or things, it's on onthisday.com. So going to the dice, beginning with yes. And spend money. And sex. Also, I didn't give you guys my thoughts on the moon. I, I went over them somewhat in the, in the general. Um, I just feel like because the moon is about femininity and further to that for me, specifically surrender, feminine energy of surrender, but about femininity and nurturing and um, being a mother and the moon is essentially mother, um, her energy. That's the way it's written in the scriptures too. There's a lot of talk of that. Um, in the book of Enoch and other places in the scriptures. Um, I've, and, and the cards that showed up in the general too, that sort of confirmed it. I feel that there is going to be, not just for women um, or the feminine, but there's going to be a lot of this energy of feeling self-empowered um, and maybe more so for the feminine. Like, even if you're single, um, it's sort of like a conscious choice to remain that way for a time and to get back to knowing you and to you know, like you recognize you're not, you're alone, you're not lonely. You know, you're, you're, 
you're enjoying um, being with you. And that's not to say that you don't want to be a part of a couple. It's just that it's just to say that you are not um, you are not put down and deflated by not being part of a couple like you're fine with yourself as well and you, um, you know you are you are strengthened and getting to you know, like some of some are newly single is what I was feeling that there's been some of that um, enough to speak of now and like you had forgotten what it was like to be just you and not not part of like some kind of unit and so we're doing that um, also I, I guess that's the most important part of what I was feeling and if anything else comes up as I as we go through the reading I'll, I'll mention it then so yes spend money and sex Sounds like I should go back to uh, Atlantic City. I went to Atlantic City two years ago with one of my girlfriends um, for Valentine's Day. It was like some kind of break, too. Some kind of holiday or something. Maybe President's Day? And I ended up coming home on Valentine's Day and then going out. All right. Anyway, um, it's the same ones. You saw me shake them up. Yes. Oh, this one changed. Cocktail. And sex. So the only one that changed is spend money, and it, it changed to cocktail. So spend money on drinks. All right. Going to the Angel Tarot. I'm beginning with the Ace of Fire. An exciting new opportunity. Career advancement. Change your life now. And opening to the Knight of Water, who's emotional, romantic, enthusiastic, and contemplative. Falling in love or wedding proposals. The need to balance emotions and an invitation to a social event. The um, Knight of Water could be who delivers this new opportunity to us or who joins us for this new opportunity or it could be our energy and it's something if so it's we're going after something about which we're extremely passionate the knight of water is a cancer pisces or scorpio and um and or somebody taking on those traits or attributes i i was think as i was speaking i was reminded um of the period that this reading covers because for, for me it, it tends to be around two weeks um and like basically up until the next um, major moon phase and so the new moon occurs on the 15th speaking of valentine's day the 15th for some of us and the 16th for others so valentine's day will have been on the 14th um on the and it's the new moon in aquarius on the 11th, so also falling into this period, we have Venus entering Pisces. And I see a lot of good things surrounding that. Um, also, All right, maybe that's it for now. I lost it. But yeah, so I'll continue to, if anything comes up, like I said, I'll continue to let you guys know as we do the reading. So coming to the Ten of Water, a contented and rewarding family life. Your emotional and material needs are met and you have trustworthy relationships. Knight of Water. And Justice. Fair and just decisions. Do what you know is right. Stand up for your beliefs. Uh, justice represents the sign of Libra and or perhaps Venus, which rules Libra. This can be that Venus, for example, in Pisces that is coming. Knight of Water. 
And the king of fire, who's motivational, idealistic, ambitious, and charismatic. Focus, 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 and communicate with vision. Be a leader. Take advice from someone creative. So this also came up um, for this week as a, like a really overlying theme, particularly for the masculine, um, of releasing fear and, you know, stepping out, taking a, a leap of faith and stepping out to, like, take charge of his life and... and how he wants things. This three of air is sticking up here. So maybe we'll see to what this applies um, soon. Great sadness. Take time to heal. There's a need to forgive yourself and others. And awakening, which represents the sign of Pisces and the planet Neptune that rules it for me. It's the hangman in the traditional tarot. Look at things from a different perspective. You're at a temporary standstill. It's important to be yourself in that moment. And opposite that um, king of fire, that may have been a particular message for the divine masculine. The king of fire um, could be representing also the Leo for this moon. The king of fire is a Leo, Sagittarius or Aries, um, or perhaps a Scorpio, or somebody taking on those traits or attributes. And we've come to the five of earth. Fears surrounding money the wisdom to accept help from others, and uncertain self-employment. As it relates to love, this is also about lack for me. So it's not just like lack of money, it's any type of lack of abundance um, that we could be feeling if this card comes up. Also like fear of abandonment um, and being, you know, like left alone um, to fend for oneself in, you know, various ways. Energy is the seven of water, which also represents for me the planet Neptune and the sign of Pisces and what can be like that fantasizing and or confused um, sort of energy. Maybe the need to make a decision um, or awaiting a decision or like just thinking about your dreams and a decision in that sense, like what should I do with my life? Where am I? Who am I? You could, that could be what you're deciding. And maybe that's why you don't mind being alone for a while, too. I didn't do something that I'd wanted to. I may still do it. I meant to see like what chakras we could, what we needed to work on and things like that. Um, the masculine is crowned by the queen of earth who is thoughtful, creative, warm, and sensible. So he need not worry, I guess, about finances, like, you know, where that, that five of earth that just showed up a moment ago. Make time for those around you. Take a sensible approach and deal with challenges in a kind and understanding manner. The queen of earth is a Taurus, Virgo, or Capricorn, um, and can also represent Venus, as Venus is the ruler of uh, Taurus. Masculine is surrounded by the moon with Archangel Haniel. Important psychic insights, events behind the scenes, release fears that hold you back. Oh, I forgot this most major part. So um, the moon in the, in the tarot also represents the sign of Pisces. This, so I, I think that that is going to be significant. Um, and you know what? It's interesting because Venus is all about popularity and abundance. It's, it's the planet of... Um, basically love and money um, and popularity. And Pisces and Neptune um, is going to be more about sensitivity. So I, I think in areas of love and emotion and relationship, um, it's going to be a really, really good time when, when these two come together. Um, and also on the 18th, the sign of Pisces um, will begin by some calendars, I guess you would call it. Um, others on the 19th. I actually have a sister who is a Cuspian, a Pisces Cuspian born on the 19th. Um, important psychic insights, events behind the scenes, release fears that hold you back. Also, I was gonna say that the moon, Earth's moon, um, actually rules the sign of cancer. And this, 
Leo full moon is um, said to going to be sort of sitting in the claws of cancer um, of the crab. So from a positive standpoint, where we, we've been needing to go after what we want, I think it's like very much, it's figurative, but kind of literal to say like, it's in your grasp, it's like within the claws. It's in your grasp to go after these things that you've wanted. Um, from a standpoint where that energy has been negative and representative of um, even Lilith for me, and this would definitely be it, like Black Moon Lilith in Capricorn, um, these two cards sitting here together, that it's going to be eclipsed out is what I was feeling. With the full eclipse, it's going to be eclipsed out. And on the opposite side, we have Leo, um, which is ruled by the sun. So we have that brightness. We have things being illuminated, things coming to light, um, and empowerment. And maybe empowerment specifically, again, of the divine masculine and taking that leadership role, letting go of the fear that he was holding on to. It was preventing him from doing that. In his subconscious is balance or temperance, which is a very, um, quote unquote, karmic energy for me, as in of the universe um, and healing. It's sent to restore us, um, to make things whole again um, where they may not be. So if it's in the area of information and there's holes in the story, so to speak. There's things missing that you didn't know. Temperance could be coming through to fill those in for you and, and maybe in connection again to, because this is a fire sign. Temperance represents the sign of Sagittarius. Um, so it's another fire sign. It could be coming to help to illuminate these things that have been kept in the dark by the moon. Um, it can be coming to restore your finances. Maybe you were feeling that five of earth before, but now queen of earth because temperance has come through. For the feminine, very nice. Mirroring the masculine's queen of earth, we have our own, a page of earth. Scholarly, dependable, patient, and successful is the page of earth. Also represents the sign of Virgo for me, but can be a Taurus or a Capricorn as well. Good news about financial matters. Wanting to do something more challenging and a new area of study are also possible. This can apply to life, right? A new lease on life, so to speak, and looking at new areas because you're on your own. Um, for some of us, or you're, or you're empowered, even if you're part of a couple, you're feeling empowered and you're feeling okay by yourself. You're feeling um, it, like well, you can be interdependent as opposed to codependent or overly independent. You can be interdependent as in stand on your own to feed and stand alone, but also um, join with another. And so that could be the new lease. Or you may be actually learning something, um, you know, like physically learning something as in going to school or taking up a new craft or something like that. Um, for some, that's going to be February is going to be um, break time and be getting ready to begin the spring semester in college. So some of us could be doing that or learning something new at work. Because I do feel, again, um, when Venus um, enters Pisces, that not just in areas of love, but in areas of money too, everything that she affects, it's, it's going to be softer and more um, heartwarming, and, you know, and more touching, even in areas of money. That's my feeling thus far. The feminine is surrounded by the four of fire, contentment, peace and abundance and a happy home life. The successful completion of a project, maybe at work or going to school, getting some sort of certification or graduating or something, maybe... February is the end of the um, winter semester. Maybe you just finished learning something. And that's what this is. This can also be entering a commitment. This can be marriage. This can be getting a new home, moving, um, something that would make you happy and is quite possibly of the tangible, but can represent like relationships and things too. It's just, it's peace and joy. It's feeling good about your life. Um, and the feminine subconscious is the queen of air who's independent, experienced, realistic, and witty. And so this is like very much Venus mirroring herself, the queen of air and the queen of earth, both of her, her energies there together. Um, objective decision-making, clearing away all that no longer serves you, and seeing the humor in a situation. So what you may have cleared away could be an actual person. It could be a relation, could have been a relationship that actually, and it ended up bringing you joy because it allowed you to be this page of earth afterwards. 
to learn something new about yourself. Crowning, the six of air. Things are looking up. It's the end of a difficult situation. You may even be taking a trip. This can be literal about like taking a trip. It can be about moving again um, and crossing the four of fire. It can certainly be about a new home, a new apartment or something. Maybe your first time being single. Maybe that's what you're learning in your life because you cut off the partners. You cut off the people that, with whom you were living, whether it was your family, um, you know, siblings, roommates, parents, children, spouse, boyfriend, girlfriend, maybe you cut them off and you've learned, you're learning to be independent, but in a healthy way. That can be, um, can be taking a trip too and going to, to visit people, or it can be purely metaphorical that we're moving into more, you know, calmer, stiller waters where we had been experiencing difficulty. There are no more, no more like rough seas, um, in our life or storms. It's just peace. At the root, unity or the high priest or the hierophant, traditional viewpoints and methods, spiritual organizations, seek out mentors and like-minded friends. Uh, crossing the four of fire, this can absolutely be marriage, commitment, relationship, home, moving in together, like all of these things that would make one happy. And again, with moving at the root and this here, moving, but maybe as a couple, moving forward where we were stagnant before, all of these things are possible. Um, this can also be about changing your environment and with whom or what or where one surrounds themselves. The queen of air could step in to cut away what was no longer necessary. And now you're in a better environment because with the, when the hierophant shows up, one thing it guides us to do is to surround ourselves with people and places and things of our vibration or higher, right? Um, when we know better, we, we, we do better, right? So this is about having learned and now we're doing better. I'm going to clear away what is, uh, debt, you know, to my detriment, I'm no longer going to keep those things around me because I've learned how to be alone. I'm not going to, um, sacrifice myself for the sake of having people around me because those people are not helping me. Like some of, for there's been a time where some of us just needed to be surrounded by people. We needed to keep attachments to people and these codependent situations. Um, even if we weren't happy in them, and so this is, again, learning a new way to, to live um, as a standalone, you know, and uh, on our own two feet without having to um, be any part of any sort of codependent situation at all. At the heart of the matter, boom, it's the wheel with Archangel Michael. And I think the wheel is at the heart of the matter at one of our other readings. Um, may have been the love. No, it's the general. Um, Yep, it's absolutely the general reading. The wheel is at the heart of the matter. A time of positive change. A situation suddenly moves forward and fortune is on your side. So notice this um, wording here too, moves forward. Again, um, something could be literally and or figuratively moving um, for either or both here. I just want to move this a little. Speaking of moving, I want to move the camera a little. <laughs> there we go and get like the whole card in frame. So I'm gonna clarify these with the romance angels, beginning with wedding. This situation involves marriage, which again, it very easily may, and opening to new love, a new person has stirred your romantic feelings. New love. Playfulness, to recapture romance, allow your inner youthful spirit of fun to shine. As far as connections of zodiac signs with these, th these can be actual characters that are here at the table. Um, as it relates to the major arcana, we have fire. The wheel represents the planet Jupiter. That Sagittarius balance or temperance represents the sign of Sagittarius. So there can be that going on. Um, a Sagittarian that is particularly impactful upon your life at this time. Taurus is right? Taurus coming through here. I, I connected this to Venus. She is the ruler of Taurus as well, but unity or the hierophant, um, or the, you know, the high priest represents the sign of Taurus as well. Virgo here for me with the page of earth, but it can be, of course, any earth sign, um, Capricorn also, and, um, Taurus again, <laughs> Pisces with the moon, um, or perhaps cancer. 
and of course the queen of air aquarius libra gemini Playfulness back, which also tends to represent signs like Gemini and Sagittarius for me. Also Virgo, the more youthful, like taking on traits or attributes of one of those signs when we need to be more playful and lighthearted. And opening to trust. This situation is calling for you to have faith. Playfulness. I'm going to cut. And it's engagement. I started with wedding. I'm landing on engagement now. Your love life is ascending to a higher level of commitment. Overall energy is let go of control issues. That can represent the codependency that I was talking about before. Instead, allow this situation to unfold naturally. This can also be, again, why the queen of air is here, to cut away the any cords to... Um, any energy of control or chasing or anything like that. Here atop the queen of earth and the planet of love and money is wedding. This situation involves marriage. Atop the moon where there, is, there are unknowns, the romance angels may be filling us in. This could be the one. You've already met the romantic partner you seek. And we do have another couple in wedding attire standing here under this one. And a top balance or temperance. Give your relationship a chance. Work on your partnership. Maybe you have to help to restore it, to restore that energy. A top of the page of earth. Very appropriate. It is finances and career. Financial issues are a factor in your love life right now. Very appropriate because, of course, this is an um, earth. It's pentacles, coins, um, uh, atop which it has landed. But also, again, particularly with the page of earth, it's, it's, it tends to be about work um, and or going to school so that you can um, better your financial situation, right? And good news, pages bring news, news about financial matters. Yes, good news about financial matters. Exactly. So finance is a career. This is positive here. We're getting a um, message that all is going to be well in that area. Atop the four of fire, getting to know each other. As you reveal your innermost selves with each other, your bond deepens. Um, so that may be how the commitment deepens and what causes you to enter commitment. Atop the queen of air, who can be a chatty patty, um, it's commu air signs are the communication signs is heart to heart conversation. So this is also very appropriate. Honestly, discuss your feelings with each other. Atop the six of air is passion. Allow your heart and soul to sing with joy because we're just smooth sailing now. So you can do that. At the root, atop unity or the high priest, the hierophant, is attraction. You attract romantic love by enjoying this moment fully. So you can manifest um, these sort of things, this commitment, marriage, um, people of your vibration or other energies of your vibration surrounding you. You can bring all those things in based on what you send out. Attraction is more, more than just attraction as it's listed here in the card. For me, it is truly about the law of attraction and manifestation, this card. The heart of the matter atop the wheel of fortune, which I want to um, 
point out also crosses this finances and career and good news about financial matters. We have the, we have it crossing the wheel of fortune, so that that like sort of doubles the impact. But atop that is children. Your love life is being affected by children. For some, this is abundance, and this is something that they want. It's a bundle too, um, like as in of joy and sitting here next to that. So they could be like, here comes love, here comes marriage, here comes you with the baby carriage. That can be one of the things. But the children also, I feel, um, is representing the newness and the birth of. Um, this abundance that had been sort of blocked and kept away from you before because of the ties that we refused to cut to this energy of codependency and things. And like, we're really loosening the reins on those. And again, it's like smooth sailing now and a fresh start. So that, that energy of being held back, dying, um, darkness setting on it and it's over with the full moon. Full moons are about ending and then endings that give way to new beginnings. So I'm going to further clarify these again with the Ascendant Master cards to see if they need to tell us anything. Beginning with Angus and Twin Flame and opening to clear and shield your energy with El Moria. Clear and shield your energy. And Yoga, which is about meditation for me and Babaji. Uh, yoga is a, a means of meditation or prayer. Prayer is a means of meditation too, as far as I'm concerned. Um, they're all connected. Yoga and Babaji. And yes, says Ganesh. And when he says yes, he's saying, yes, I'm removing the obstacles that were in your way before. So now, you, you know, we can give birth to this abundance. And you may recall the dice also said yes. I'm going to go ahead and cut. positive change. So we, we're getting this message again. That's what the wheel of fortune is all about. A time of positive change. A situation suddenly moves forward. So all about moving, um, you know, toward peace, happiness, joy, contentment, commitment, financial security, all those things. Overall energy is persistence and Lou. So that this is um, very nine of fire, like keep going, even if you're beginning to feel weary, um, because look how far you've come. And like you've made it to this time where things are getting better. It's not the time to give up now. Here at Top Wedding, and the queen, very appropriately again, on top, the queen of earth um, in this wedding is retreat into nature, says green man. And a green man is all about love and money, just like Venus and abundance um, when this card shows up. But also the need to connect with her and to spend some time in nature. Maybe you want to go out and check out um, the moon. So we just went over where it may be in your area, wherever you are. And that can help to... Um, sort of marry you to you, if, if not to anyone else. Again, getting back in touch with yourself and with um, mother, with nature, with the universe. And quite possibly an earth sign. <laughs> very, very possibly an earth sign. Um, Atop the moon, and this could be the one. Serapis Bay says, go now. So you may have been unsure, and there may have been, again, holes in the story or pieces that you couldn't put together and you weren't sure, is this the one, is that the one? Romance Angel step in to say, this is the one, um, yes, and all of that. And go now, like stop wasting time. And now that you know, um, you know, go after what is yours. Here, atop balance. Uh, I like this. I like Osiris on top of um, Temperance because Temperance is Major Arcana card 14. And when King Osiris is whole, um, he, rep he is represented by the number 14 for me. He was cut into 14 pieces and won his 
phallus, his penis, was thrown into the Nile River and eaten by a fish. So that's how the 13 comes up for me. But when it's 14, he is, rest he is restored like temperance. He is whole. Um, so I like seeing this. But when this comes up, give your relationship a chance. It may be, again, a relationship with yourself. And being able to marry yourself because when father, husband, brother, son comes up, there is a masculine energy in your life, which can easily be yourself with whom you need to heal a relationship. Now, some of you will need to heal one with your father, husband, brother, son, or maybe with your um, feminines or a feminine energy in your life, maybe with their, you know, masculine part <laughs> um, is with whom you have to, to feel the, um, to heal the relationship, but it can very easily be you and give that relationship a chance too. You know, not just with other people. The top finances and career in the page of Earth, spiritual law of attraction. So we're pulling this, these, um, we're manifesting. We're pulling in the things that we need to help us through the law of attraction. Putting out positive energy, um, optimist, um, mystic energy, right? Very yeah, just positive energy. And that's how we're, we're pulling these things back in. If you look at the glass half empty, then, you know, your glass may remain half empty. If, it, if your cup overflow, then, you know, and, and whether you can see that or not, if you, that's what you feel, then that's what you're going to get. Right? My cup runneth over. A top four of fire and getting to know each other and sitting here under the page of earth, which can be... Um, all about learning is this card that for me does represent most of all, um, you know, the experience that is life. And that can include getting to know each other and similar to the masculine, getting to know ourselves, whatever is going to lead to this um, peace and happiness and like some sort of um, complete, right? Or completedness. I'm making up a word. Um, as in we've completed a project and that project may have been to um, get to know ourselves better. Aw. Atop the Queen of Air. So maybe specifically a direct air sign. And heart to heart conversations is twin flame. So that may be with whom you need to speak and or, and or about what you need to speak. And you're going to do it like with objectiveness and being willing to listen, um, being realistic, being fair, allowing for balance and equity and all this, which is love. All these things equate to love. That's why Venus is the, the goddess and the planet of love. Um, even though, you know, she's represented by, by, by six, by this fairness. Speaking of six, atop the six of air and the passion is purification in white Tara. So this is like more about the, these still waters and clear waters, no more um, darkness, no more mud, no more murky, you know, water. This is pure. This is clear waters. We've removed what around us doesn't fit. And if we haven't already, we are doing that so that we can make room and give way to our passions instead. At the root here, a top unity and attraction, work your magic, St. Germain. So work your magic in terms of this law of attraction. I just told you how it works and how you can get it to work for you and do what you need to do. Maybe in, to, in manifesting um, a commitment with husband, Osiris, divine masculine, with twin flame, one and the same. At the heart of the matter, a top children and the wheel of fortune is thought and right with this moon. Um, and again, this can be like writing um, a new contract sitting here above the Hierophant and atop the Wheel of Fortune, some sort of new contract, new means of bringing in um, abundance. And a contract can be a marriage, crossing wedding. And again, sitting atop the Hierophant and sitting next to the Four of Wands, this can be that too. And again, here comes love, here comes marriage, here comes you with a baby carriage, the full package, the full abundance. And planning too, 
Like maybe those things don't happen immediately, but planning them, work on your partnership with your, you know, husband, spiritual or, you know, physical in 3D or planning for that to happen, right? Write it out, plan it out, work on your partnership. Lastly, advice from Isis and perhaps King Osiris, beginning with ancient power mysteries. Hear the rattle of Isis playing. So this is more maybe of the children and birth of new things, um, birth of new relationships, new circumstances, new contracts, maybe new jobs, crossing um, the queen of earth and the green man and the page of earth. There's, there's many possibilities here. It's all about abundance. And I went... Um, I, sp I spoke a lot about abundance and how, what specifically you might need to do in order to manifest it in the general reading. I even used my um, Angels of Abundance cards there. Opening to Rising Sun, the Divine Solar Child Reborn. Rising Sun, and enter the Chamber of Healing. Healing in the Divine Chamber of the Lady Isis. Rising Sun. Divine Guardian, protection of the winged mother here standing in front of the full moon. And goddess of 10,000 names, Isis, endless emanations of the priestess. And that's coming through very I am every woman, Shaka Khan or Whitney Houston, whichever one you, <laughs> you prefer, um, you know, whatever you want to call me, mother, sister, daughter, friend, I'm, I can be all these things, worker, independent woman, married woman, capable of it all, rising sun back and soul retrieval, deep soul healing with the goddess. Rising sun. I'm going to cut. Queen of heaven. Blessing from the divine empress of the skies. And the overall energy is temple of lapis lazuli. Goddess of the ancient skies. Very happy to say that while shuffling, um, either prior or during, I have not seen um, White Buffalo Calf Woman or Proper Burial for Freedom. And I hope I'm not speaking too soon, but I have not seen it either. And I'm very happy about that. From the Ascendant Masters, Masculine, they say you can do it. So I know in both the general and the love reading, you were guided to move away from something that was holding you back, um, whether it was a person, place, thing, or a combination of those. And I think Archangel Michael is coming to support that message that you can do it, as, as is, of course, um, Serapis Bay here, and even King Osiris guiding you to be one with yourself. Also, I'm, I'm, I failed to say, um, he's also likely showing up because he has a, um, a, a feast day, so to speak, that falls into this period as well with the... Um, the two weeks that this will cover on the 31st, the same day, I can't believe I almost forgot to say this, the same day as the full moon is what is called the 15th, is, it's called 15 Shavat or Tuba Shavat. And what that is, is um, the celebration that, for, that goes back thousands of years, um, you know, to Hebrew practices, um, Ju Judaism and the Torah, um, of celebrating man as a tree. And I I can't believe I, I mentioned his penis being thrown into the, the Nile and him being chopped into 14 pieces. And I still didn't think about where his coffin ended up um, and what else was falling into this period. His coffin ended up being intertwined with what we would now refer to as the tree of life and sort of um, growing molded into it. And so that's like his final 
resting place. That's probably also another reason why he is here right now um, in this form. But also doubling down to, to the masculine to say, yes, you can do it. You can move away from this stuff that was holding you back. And I actually had a divine masculine He's commented before, he commented on one of my videos, he's commented before that people typically read for him or read him as the divine feminine, um, but he doesn't read himself that way or, or I guess feel that way. And only in my readings do I read this, <laughs> do the divine masculine descriptions apply to him. Uh, and he was saying that he agreed and he is ready to sort of move forward and go after um, his relationship and with his divine feminine. So I told him that we were all rooting for him. That comment is on one of the readings, the love or the um, general for this week. So the rest of you can do it too, um, if that's what you're wanting to do. Follow your heart's desires. Feminine, stay focused. And this is very in keeping with our overall energy of persistence and Lou. Um, this is Kathumi supporting that message. From the romance angels to the masculine, New love, a new person has stirred your romantic feelings. And we discussed in the other readings that this can be your old love, and it likely is, um, for those of you who have one, um, anew, renewed in a new way. The fact that it didn't work out before, and maybe that's what, another reason why the five of earth showed up here before, because that lack is like staring you in the face, and that's what you're afraid of. You're afraid of revisiting the thing that was missing, the thing that didn't connect, the thing that didn't work in your relationship before that's not a reason to not try again if um, your heart is guiding you to do so. So that can be what the new love is for others who have not yet, um, you know, experienced that. Then it's going to be brand new love. And that's beautiful. Um, at least equally as beautiful. Romance angels to the feminine. Release your ex. The time has come to clear your energy. Um, for a lot of us, I think that's going to be expression and being expressive, releasing that and opening up. Uh, we've been closed off and for similar reasons, like we you know, didn't work out before and now we're afraid and we shut down. Um, so letting go of that. For others, um, <laughs> this still applies. The queen of air still applies. We're cutting off people, um, places and things, relationships, even friends family members um, that don't match our vibration, that don't align with us because it, 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 it has become physically taxing because it is toxic. So we're cutting people off. That's what the Queen of Air specializes in. For some, it can be a relationship like a karmic relationship that wasn't working because we have unity and we have the four of wands. So it can be like a marriage, a commitment of some sort um, with which we are dispensing. We're writing this person off. Maybe we're signing divorce papers. That's why this is next to us for here. Um, from the angels to the masculine, renewal or judgment which represents the sign of Scorpio for me. So enter the Scorpio. Well, he had already entered, right? The, the Scorpion King is here sitting atop um, this Sagittarius energy, which also makes sense because Mars during this period, which rules Scorpio, um, will have entered Sagittarius. In fact, it did so on the 26th of January. So um, uh, sometimes I'm a little slow, but I, but I help <laughs> with the messages because I'm, Trying to do so many things at once, but I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. Um, so renewal, judgment, which represents, as I was saying, the planet Pluto, which um, is Scorpio's other ruler, um, and therefore Scorpio for me. Review and evaluate. A favorable assessment of the facts. It's time to move in a new direction. So go now. It's time to move. We're moving into calmer, stiller waters. We may be physically moving, like we've had all these, all these signs. Um, as it relates to money, career, job, um, and the masculine in particular, we saw this in the other, in the general reading, ascension, promotion, and raise, um, both in the literal sense here on earth, um, and then in the 3D, and in a more figurative sense, in terms of ascension and being raised or promoted by the universe as well, that other boss, as it relates to relationships, romantic and otherwise, it's a, you know, 
um, like an hour never make or break crossroad type of time. And we're deciding like, you know, what do I want? Where, where do we go from here, if anywhere? And, you know, for some people, the answer for you, um, your, your answer to them is going to be nowhere. Like this is the end. Um, because you're walking away from something you're moving away from something and perhaps someone and to the contrary with other people, you're going to say, let's move forward. And like, I'm not afraid to move forward anymore. Perhaps the divine feminine for you, like with, um, the, the gentleman about whom I was just speaking and you're going to decide, make a conscious decision to, to move forward. Feminine for us, here's that single ladies card. Um, so again, this can show up even if we are partnered and so nobody should panic, but it's about being able to be ourselves and stand on our own two feet too, even if we are partnered, right? We're not dependent on the masculine um, and we're okay if he's not there. Um, we understand what quote unquote separation means and is about now and that it doesn't necessarily mean that we're apart. Um, it's actually an illusion. It's not even real. The only thing that's real is love anyway. Like we get all that. And so that's what this is about. Also, um, you know, like we've earned peace, the peace of mind, the happiness that's here with this, the four of wands. And again, getting to know each other, which include ourselves the teacher, which is about the life experience. Like we've earned this, we've learned lessons, um, and learned how to manifest, you know, more positive things and goodness into our life. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life because my cup runneth over again. Um, so that's the, the, what this is. And I started with this card, um, in the general reading. Yes, in the general reading. And that was one of the things that made me feel what I did or, or confirmed for me what I did about um, this moon, this Leo full moon. Enjoying life's little luxury, spending quiet time alone and successful self-employment. So this is going to get a massage. This is going to get your nails done, your hair done, whatever, you know, going to the gym, maybe. Whatever makes you happy. Spending time with girlfriends, um, you know, or going to lunch or brunch or whatever yourself, party of one, whatever makes you feel good and you're comfortable doing it. Um, you're not worried about the money that it takes to, to do these things. You've decided that you are, you know, worth spending on too. From the Isis Oracle to the masculine initiation, Spiritual testing of Ra and the Lady Isis. How appropriate is that? Ra um, represents, at least for me, the sign of Leo. He is a Leo, um, as is his daughter, Sekhmet. Um, so that's appropriate. And for the feminine, talismans of potency, charging sacred objects of power. Maybe some of us will be charging objects under the full moon. If we have an opportunity to get outside in nature, putting out some of our crystals and stones. Uh, if we live in a place that's conducive to that, you may have a yard of your own um, or a terrace or something where you can um, put something out, a patio. You can re leave your stuff out um, safely, at least for a time to get some charge. That can be what this means for us. But let's see what it means according to the book. Initiation, spiritual testing of Ra and the Lady Isis. When you're being spiritually tested and initiated into the mysteries of light, love, and power, there are moments of deep challenge. The key is to find the light within the challenge, the learning, growth, or wisdom that can be summoned to turn the challenge into an opportunity for healing. Whilst the scorching heat of Ra seeks to burn through any resistance, the Lady Isis with compassion and cleverness will protect you from burning and instead enable you to be nourished and to grow from the light of Ra. Let Isis help you to pass the test of intense growth as you thrive with new life. For advanced aspirants on the path of initiation, initiation will occur at various stages. Sometimes you and your entire life will feel like an initiation at other times, specific areas will be flowing easily whilst others are deeply challenging. Well, for us, everything's going to be flowing easily now. 
at least during this period. The oracle comes as confirmation that you are not needlessly suffering. If you can find the light within the struggles, tests, or challenges that face you now, you will experience breakthrough healing. I read a similar card in the love reading. It is almost un the almost unbearable. So it is the almost unbearable solar fire of Ra that can cleanse the soul of wounds and the love, compassion, and intelligence of Isis that can temper the heat of Ra and stop them from burning and drying out and drying you out. Or else you would be left with nothing but emptiness, anger, bitterness, and despair in your heart. These are not meant to be the outcomes of life challenges. Rather than losing love and hope through the challenges of life, the initiate understands all aspects of life are growth opportunities in various states of disguise, waiting to be discovered. As an initiate, this oracle urges you to honor life as a gift and to treat any challenge or pressure as a way for you to grow into brighter and purer light, capable of great spiritual service on this planet. That spiritual service includes growing an ability to be able to love freely and beyond limits, to love with courage and faith. So this supports what we've been talking about, going after whatever your, it is your passions burn for. In fact, initiation for you now, dear one, is an opening to new levels of power and peace, self-possession and love. There are such sweet fruits waiting for you at the top of the tree. I like how they're mentioning the fruits in the tree again with the 15th um, of Shabbat. It is a celebration of the fruit trees and specifically seven specific ones. I don't remember what they all were. I know fig and pomegranate are on the list. Um, in any case, there are such sweet fruits waiting for you at the top of the tree that you are currently climbing. It may seem as though you are in a barren land at times with little hope, nourishment, or encouragement, yet your spiritual oasis is not far away. The Lady Isis and the power of Ra together are helping you to grow. Stay focused on the Lady and her love for you, and, your, and you shall pass through the desert of initiation unharmed and deeply transformed which is about which is what pluto is about it's the planet of transformation and certainly what um osiris or the scorpion king is about transformation and the sign of scorpio in general and you are made in you know this image so the same goes for you feminine talismans of potency Sacred tools and objects can become an extension of your energy field, focusing your power and intention and helping you to heal the split between spirit and matter and learning to bring physical matter more deeply into light and life. You are encouraged to work with sacred materials in a conscious way and to help your own healing and enjoyment of the material world as a part of your spiritual practice. Your love for the physical world of, a, of matter is a gift to the earth too. You are guided to cleanse and to charge sacred objects to empower your energy field and to accomplish your spiritual mission now. These objects might be a wand, chalice, or sword, a bowl, or even a special tile with an image that you love, a statue, cloth with beautiful design, a spiritual crystal, crystal, <laughs> or a black mirror, or a rock, shell, or feather that you found, quote unquote, waiting for you whilst out in nature one day. If finding a gift in nature, um, it is wise to ask the spirit of the earth if the item in question is intended for your healing work. And if you feel it is, then of course, receive it with gratitude. If not, bless it and move on. So it's saying like, we don't take and pick up every single thing we find um, outside. It's warning against that. Wait one second, this is getting dark, hang on. See my camera getting dark. Um, in any case, this oracle is seeking to draw your awareness to your special ability and to work with material objects to awaken spiritual light within them. The material world is filled with light and our loving attention can help awaken the light within form. In the same way that someone is seeing the best of you, Knowing what you're tru truly capable of can help you to reach your dreams and to become that self more fully. It's talking about this, becoming this self-sufficient person. 
um, and, and self-confident person. So, so too can holding an awareness that just like our bodies, the material world holds its own light and benefits from love, attention, and care. This is the loving art of integrating spirit into matter, and it is part of your spiritual potency and healing gift to be able to love the physical world as an element of your spiritual journey. Objects become talismans when they are cleansed, dedicated, and charged with sacred intent. This is consecration or the rendering of something into sacredness. Talismans are a way to enjoy a spiritual relationship with the material world. It's not a matter of being able to work without them, but more of enjoyment and beauty of working with the material world in a spiritual way. This is also a way to heal any difficult relationship that you may have had with your mother or your body, eating and food, or with fin financial or physical security. It can also include difficulties in bringing your ideas, um, difficulty in bringing your ideas into physical form, living your path in a practical and material way, and any other issues that stem from a wounded relationship to matter somehow seeing it as less than spirit. What wonderful and varied healing effects talismans can bring to us. It all starts with the honoring of light in matter, the sacredness of the material world. If you've been considering working with crystals for healing or tarot cards or physical tools for spiritual growth, you're encouraged to do so by the Oracle of Talismans of Potency. They will help you to grow and empower you. If you have an object in your space, that you've been thinking of cleansing, perhaps a crystal or a piece of jewelry. This oracle encourages you to do so using breath, salt, moonlight, or sound as you so choose. Remember that objects in the material world hold vibrations too. Cleansing with love and intention to dissipate negative energy is a way to care for the material world, helping awaken the light within it. If you've been considering building sacred jewelry, or purchasing a crystal or other healing tool, you're encouraged to do so and to learn to work with it. The Oracle of Talismans of Potency supports you in honoring the physical world and its beauty in your life in this way. I hope that you guys find this helpful in guiding you through the next two weeks and the energy of the full blue blood moon and full lunar eclipse in Leo. Namaste, angels.